Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and today we're gonna to be changing the OEM midpipe on my BMW M2 competition to the amazing single channel midpipe from the Active Auto Work, and I wanna show you how to do this yourself. All right, so this really isn't all that hard of a project. It's gonna take you a little while and a few simple tools. Everything you need is gonna be listed in the description below. And this is one of those changes that can make a dramatic difference in your S55 motor car. So BMW M3, M4, or the M2 competition. Now, there's a lot of complaints really about the sound of this motor and that it's because of a design with the midpipe itself. Because the S55 motor has two turbos and the exhaust path coming down on the OEM midpipe is not equal. So what ends up happening is you have an unequal midpipe and so you get a bit of a rasp, especially while you accelerate. Now, some people don't mind it. Some people actually like it. Some people, it really bothers them. This is a great way to not only add a little bit of horsepower as you free up your exhaust, you make a, a more free flowing exhaust path, but also radically change that mid pipe and how all of that works. And you get rid of that rasp that, that the S55 motor is so famous for. So I wanna show you how to do this, walk you through every single step, and then also make sure to check out my other videos because I'm gonna have a whole series of side-by-side -side sound comparisons between OEM and the mid-pipe and more as we walk through this. So let me show you how it's done. It's really simple. So the first thing you wanna do is get your car in the air. So let's start there. Okay, so let's talk safety here really quick before we get started. Um, I'm always gonna do this just because I wanna make sure that you're safe while you do this work. You can do this work with a jack and, and a pair of jack stands easily because all you're going to be doing is jacking up the back of the car and working from the back. But as you can see, I've got my, I have my quick jacks out and I have a video on these as well. So make sure to check that out. And I want to share a quick tip about the quick jacks in just a second. But before I get in the car in the air, I always want to stress, be careful. Always use jack stands. They're a cheap investment you know, to make sure that you're going to be safe. Do not put your car up in the air on a jack and leave it at just that. Don't bet your life on a $5 part, okay? Please don't do that. Always be safe. A great alternative are these quick jacks, which I just can't believe how wonderful these are and I use them all the time. It's a really great investment if you're gonna be out in your garage more than every once in a while. And for me, it's a really great deal and every now and then you can find them on sale. One quick tip about your quick jack, if you're gonna use these, if you haven't used them in a while, Make sure to check the little air pressure cylinder right there on both of them. They should be at 50 PSI. They tend to leak a little bit over time and so they'll be low. And that's what helps boost the quick jack when it's down completely flat. So your quick, quick jack is gonna struggle if those little boost cylinders are low. So make sure to check those. So I'm gonna get my quick jacks in place. I'm gonna get the car in the air. Then I'm gonna show you from underneath all the work that we're going to do. All right, so now that the car's up in the air, let's go ahead and kind of take a look at everything we're looking at here. Now, one of the fundamental differences between doing the M2C and say, for example, an F80 or F82, an M3 and M4, is you can actually usually cut all of this in place without taking the entire exhaust down, which I'm going to do with the M2C. So just a couple of things to look at while we're here. You can see the hanger here for the exhaust right there that we're gonna be taking down. You can see one side, you can see the, the flap control here that we're gonna unplug. There's one on each side. So we kind of work our way down the car. You can see you've got the red hanger that goes, up, that goes here up to its where it's secured. Continue to work our way down. You can see the center brace. That's one of the first things we're going to take off, but we're gonna mark things in place first, but just kind of looking at, at the overall job. Work our way down. You can see the center hanger here. We're gonna take that off as well. And there's a tool that you can use to kind of pry these, these hangers off and, and would leave the brackets in place. I find it a lot easier to do when just the whole exhaust is down uh, rather than trying to pry them off in place. And then we get up all the way up here to the top. You're gonna to see where your mid pipes are secured with these 13 millimeter nuts that we're gonna take off. But one of the very first things we're going to do as we work our way back down the car here, is we're going to measure because we're going to cut your, your mid pipe right here directly after the weld here and directly after the weld here. So let me grab my tape measure. I'll show you what we're looking at because it's like an inch and a half here and six and a quarter from the weld here. But let me lay all that out and show you what that looks like. 
So this is a left-hand drive car, right? So here in the US, so right side is passenger side, left side is driver's side. Just to be clear, because you know, I mean, obviously you can be watching this anywhere in the world, but also the pipes look different from both sides. So the straighter section out of the resonator is the right side. So what you're gonna wanna do is measure an inch and a half, and I'll show you why. So you wanna come out from the weld about an inch and a half. A little bit hard to see, but that's all right. Go out here from the, from the weld, about, see, an inch, two inches, inch and a half. And I'm gonna double and triple check all of my measurements uh, before I make a single cut. This is definitely one of those. Measure multiple times, make sure it's right. And then the other thing we're gonna do, and let me grab it, and I'll show you. We're gonna use a hose clamp. So I've got an old hose clamp that I've undone, but you just wanna put around the pipe. And then you can cinch it down. And as you can see, it's gonna give you an even mark all the way around. And that way you can, you can double check all of your measurements all the way around to make sure it's even, okay? Does that make sense? So on the right side, the passenger side, it's an inch and a half. And then on the driver's side, it's gonna be six and a quarter. This one's a little bit harder to measure out. But as you look at it, you're gonna take from the inside of the weld, and you're gonna go six and a quarter. So which is roughly about here, right at the moment. Now, the one advantage that you've got in all of this is that we're going to mark these in place, and then we're gonna take this entire assembly down. So once all of this is out, and you could even wait to measure this until it's out if you really wanted to. I'm just kind of doing it in, in the recommended order that I'm gonna measure and mark. We're not gonna cut anything here in the car. Uh, and then when we take all of this down, you can triple check all of your measurements. But, so inch and a half here on the right side, passenger side, use your hose clamp to make an even line all the way around. Six and a quarter inches from this side, from the weld out to get to the straight section right here. So I'm gonna mark it all, and then I'm gonna show you all the next steps, because we're, we're gonna take the entire exhaust assembly down. Okay, so now that the uh, pipes are marked, I just wanna show you that really quickly. I used that hose clamp on this side, I've still got the hose clamp on that side, and I just kinda rotate the hose clamp around so when I draw the line it doesn't run into the screw nut right here. So I would do one side and then flip, flip the nut to the other side and draw the other side. But again, you could always measure this once it's out of the car if you really wanted to. I'm gonna double check my measurements once it's out of the car for sure. Um, this is one of those, you know, measure three, four, five, six times before you make a cut and make sure you make a good, clean, even cut. But we'll get to that in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our cross brace support here. These are six millimeter Allens. You're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna take that out. And then we're gonna kind of work our way backwards in the car. You've got some hangers that you're gonna take off and you've got the 13 millimeter nuts all the way up here at the top. So you've got a reverse Torx here, which I'll cover just in a moment when we get there. We're gonna take this entire hanger off. And then you've got the 13 millimeter here at the top. And you've got four nuts that hold each of these on to each side. One top, one bottom, one top, one bottom. So we're gonna take those off. And you can see mine are a little bit rusted. So be careful when you take these off. I've had these foul before and become a problem and had to replace them. You don't have to take the locking plate off, just these four nuts, two on each side. So we're gonna remove those nuts and then we're gonna work our way kind of backwards down the car. Since the mid pipe is sitting on posts right here, it'll hold itself kind of in place once those nuts are off. And then we're gonna work our way down the car, taking the hangers off with the reverse torques here, which I'll cover here in a second. Okay, and then the, our mid brace will be off, which is the next thing we're gonna take off right here. The mid brace will be off. And then you've got your two 13 millimeter, that's one on each side holding these red hangers in place. We're gonna take each one of those off. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna unplug our servos for our exhaust valves. So there'll be one on each side. And these are just press clips and, and the clips will come off. And then lastly, we will take the 13 millimeter nuts, one on each side to take these brackets off and then your, ex your exhaust is off. What I would recommend is that you have an extra set of hands holding your exhaust in place once those last two uh, nuts are off because the only thing that's gonna be holding it in place at that point is fulcrum at the far end where they're sitting on the posts and you don't wanna bang those up. And then 
ideally a second set of hands here at this end holding your, your exhaust tips to help you walk it back off and out of the car. But I'm gonna start with the cross brace, and so I'll take that off and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna start at the other end and take this 13 millimeter nuts off and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so let's catch up to where we are because it's all super simple. I don't think you need to watch me taking out some nuts and that sort of thing. But let's start at the far end because there's a slight change to what I said earlier. So as it turns out, these nuts at this end are actually 11s. So they're 11 millimeter right here. Um, I actually used a ratcheting uh, wrench to make sure that I got a good grip on these. Mine are a little bit rusty. I think I'll put them, I'll put the ones that, that my car has back on uh, when I put it all back together. But you know, if, I, if I'd known, I actually probably would have replaced them. So those four nuts, but too late now. And I'm sure it's gonna be fine. They're just a little bit rusty. So the two bottom ones you can get to easily with an 11 millimeter socket or ratcheting wrench. And then the two on the top there and on this side, I actually just used a socket with a uh, 12 inch extension. All right, so then we come down and then you have an E10. So the reverse Torx, there's two of them. There's one here and one here. So both of those are off. So this hanger is now loose. We move our way down. We get to, you can see the mid brace is off because that's where the mid brace sits right here. So I just, you just take out those, those four, or excuse me, six bolts and then slide the plate out of the way. And then we get to the back hangers here that are right here. And those, and those are off and those are just nuts. Those are 12 millimeter nuts. So those, those are loose and the hangers are now loose. And then you come to your servo motor for your exhaust flaps, which are here and here. And I've already unplugged both sides, but this is, makes it easier to show you. There's a little depression tab right here. This was in place like this. You press down on the tab and then pull the plug out. So both sides are out. So at this point, the only thing keeping the exhaust and the whole assembly in place is the two hangers on either side of the exhaust. They're, they're both 12 millimeter here and here. And so what actually I'm going to do is I'm gonna get an extra set of hands to grab onto the exhaust tips and hold the exhaust in place because I don't want it to sag. What I don't want it to do is have leverage on the far end of my downpipes and bend any of that, right? So the weight of this coming down could bend it. That's what we don't want to do. So I'm going to get an extra set of hands to hold my exhaust in place as I pull both of these hangers there and there. And then this whole assembly is going to be free. So what we're going to do is just take this, bring it down a little bit so these hangers come off and then pull to get it off the far end and then walk it out from underneath the car. Really simple. All right, so it's out as you can tell. So uh, if you don't have an extra set of hands, you can always use a pair of jack stands kind of on either side. So put one here and one here, right up snug against the muffler so it doesn't sag at all. Because like I mentioned earlier, you do not want to have it sag at the far end and bend any of those plates or bend where it meets your downpipes, right? So. If you don't have an extra set of hands, you can do that and then work it off at the downpipe end, let that end drop, and then come back, take down your jack stands, and then walk the whole assembly out. Or if you have an extra set of hands, they can just hang on to the mufflers. You do those last couple of last couple of nuts and then walk the whole thing out. So as you can see, it's out. Hey, and you know, side note, this is a great opportunity to clean your exhaust tips. I know I'm going to. But as you can see, all the hangers are off. I forgot my saws all out already. And you can see it's out the whole way. I've got a wood block kind of holding it up to make it even at that end. And then we've got our marks, our measurement marks. I've come back, I've reconfirmed this one. So I've reconfirmed and marked it and made sure it's all even with the hose clamp. And then this is why, again, you measure multiple times. As you can see, I've actually got a second set of marks. So I was a little bit too far. When I re-measured from the weld an inch and a half out, I found I was out about a quarter of an inch too far. So I marked again. So I'm actually gonna cut at the inner line than the outer line. But double and triple and quadruple check your measurements and your marks before you cut, okay? Really simple. And then just cut evenly. I've got a good sawzall with a metal blade that I'm just gonna cut straight down through the pipe, make even cuts. And then also uh, consider wearing goggles. I know I'm going to, and I say that just from a place that uh, <laughs> doing this job once, I got a piece of hot metal in my eye and it really sucked for about two weeks. So be safe while you do this, wear goggles, go ahead and cut. So I'm gonna cut both of these and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, pretty, pretty easy. Good blade on my Sawzall. You can see the cut straight, good clean cut. So you can see on that one, my blade chattered a little bit as I was first doing starting the cut. 
nothing bad. Just scored the surface, as you can see. Especially it doesn't matter on, on the left side, the resonator side, because that's going away. But as you can see, nice clean cuts. So now, next step you want to do of what you want to do is I've got the new pipe laid out. You're going to want to transfer that hanger. So what you're going to want to do is just work the rubber hanger off. Just work it out and off and transfer it onto the new hanger. And then we're going to put the new mid pipe and we're going to hang it in place. Okay, so as you can see, the transmission mount hanger has been transferred and that's pretty soft rubber. So it's pretty easy just to, to work off and squeeze back on the new one. It's in the correct orientation, which is nice. I always try to lay the pipes out side by side. So I get, I actually put the hangers back on in the right orientation. Um, I had that happen once. I put one on backwards, <laughs> which was a bit of a hassle. Okay, but I wanted to explain from before we're under the car so you can see what we're going to do. So we're gonna slide back under the car with the new pipe. We're going to hang it from this end. So hang it on the post that, that those 11 millimeter nuts came off of and then support it up into place. And then you're gonna to want to, to put the transmission mount uh, hanger, the transmission hanger back on. And then we're going to actually put the original cross brace back in place just for a period of time. And we're going to shim it as well. So order of operation, 11 millimeter nuts on this end, just snug, not tight. Same thing here. Use that reverse Torx and put in those two bolts there, just snug, not tight. And then at, down at this end, we're gonna put that cross brace back in with just one bolt each on each side uh, of the Torx bolt, or excuse me, the Allen bolts to put that back in for the, for the original cross brace. Don't put the active one in yet. They also should have provided a little shim and the shim will sit between the pipe and the cross brace to help hold it in the right orientation. So hopefully that all makes sense. I'm gonna go crawl back under the car. I have all your tools handy. Um, have your 11 millimeter nuts, have your have the correct sockets handy so you're ready to go and you can hang it really easily back in place. And then I'll show you what it looks like once it's back in place. Okay, so catch up to where we are. I did exactly as we described a few minutes ago, working kind of backwards to front. You're gonna see that the, the original cross brace is in and I've got the spacer, the spacer block provided by Active sitting in between. I've got the new pipe in place. And I only just put in a single Allen bolt, just hold it in place for now to get the right spacing. Okay, we work our way up the car. We have our transmission hanger here, which is in and in just, it's in snug. You can see the, br the bracket is still just a little bit loose. It's just enough to hold it into place and help support me as it, and support the pipe as I put it in. And then we are all four of the nuts put in at this end with those 11 millimeter nuts down snug. And I actually put them in the, in the original positions. At least in my case, you can tell which nuts go where because the bottom ones are a little bit rusty. The top ones are significantly less so. So I put the bottom ones back in the same spot, the top ones back in the same spot, and it's down and snug. So now the pipe is all back in the right place and hung in the right place. So we can actually go back down and hang the muffler because the next thing we're going to do is fit these middle sections. But before that we do that, we're gonna put both ball clamps uh, here. We're gonna get them oriented in the right in the in the right set in the right setting so we can actually get to the nuts on the ball clamps. But we're gonna put both of those in place and then we're gonna coordinate getting the muffler rehung and then we'll put in these middle sections. Okay, so we're almost ready to reinstall the muffler, but before we do so, let's touch on a couple of things really quick. Go ahead and grab your ball clamps and just hang them off the mid-pipe. Uh, as you can see, the nuts are to the inside, so when we actually put these in place, they're gonna be oriented in a way that we can get to the nuts on both sides. So you can just hang them there for now. So you can see the spacer's still in, and I still have those single Allen bolts in on each side. Um, those aren't tight, tightened down yet or anything because they don't need to be. But as we come up the body here, you can tighten down the transmission hanger. This is 24 Newton meters. So grab a torque wrench, it's gonna be 24 Newton meters. And then up here at the top, you can tighten down all four of those nuts to 19 Newton meters. Keep in mind, you can, you can replace the gaskets if you want. I didn't do so, my gaskets appear to be in good shape, so I go ahead and just left them in place. Also, when I tighten them down, I really wanted to make sure that it tightened down evenly and straight. So I was kind of looking at where the plate was touching the, the connection plate and making sure that it wasn't sitting cockeyed or, or at a weird angle and kind of worked my way around to snug all four down evenly. So it's not sitting at any, you know, there isn't any little bit of a gap here or anything like that. So should be fine. So these nuts can be, again, can be tightened down uh, 19 Newton meters. 
These are tightened down and torqued down, so we're good to go. We have our ball clamps in place. We're done here. Those are all set, and now you can take your exhaust and go ahead and rehang your exhaust back in place. Put all four of the hangers, the two red, the two black, and hang your exhaust up, and we'll get it all straight and hang them all out straight once it's all set. But go ahead and get it back into place because now we're going to put those mid pipes in here, and or those those shorter pipes, and we're almost done. All right, so as you can tell, the exhaust is hung back up. All four nuts are down and snug, but I, I haven't torqued them down yet. I'll have those values for you in just a moment. I think I might have said earlier that they're 12 millimeter. They're actually 13s. So if I said 12 earlier, sorry, they're actually 13 millimeter nuts. So sliding up the car, as you can see now, what you're going to want to do here with the two ends of the pipes for your exhaust, you want to slide the torque clamps over them uh, and with the nuts in a place where you can get to them easily. And the nuts are 15s. And then you still have your bell clamps right here. And then you're just going to take your A and B section and just fit them into place and just turn them till they fit the right orientation. The bell clamp side is really easy. Just fit it on, fit the clamp over the top of it, tighten it down. And then what you're going to want to do is uh, slide your slide your torque clamp over over the top of the pipe. So it's about halfway on both. And if you can if you can arrange it, you want to have a little bit of gap in between uh, your, your the two pipes, right? The A and B pipes, and then the pipe to your exhaust. So there should be a little bit of gap there, and it should be fine. Now, if you've got a little bit of rough edge, like I do, I'm actually going to take a metal file. I've got a little bit of a burr right there from the cut, so I'm going to take that off. So all in all, we're pretty close to done and just clean up here. So I'm going to install the A and B pipes. I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's all done. And then I actually want to show you a bit of a hint. So the A and B, a and B pipes here, as I grab one of them, are just straight pipes, right? So here, here, is the, here is the pipe for this side, if it fit into place. But to give you a little bit of a hint, let me roll over and let's see if I can reach into reach here. Guess what I have? I also have the new resonated A and B pipes from Active Auto Work. So I'm going to fit the straight pipes first because what I want to do for you guys, and, and for in a future video coming really, really soon, I'm going to have a complete comparison of what the M2C stock sounds like with all of these exhaust options. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the straight pipes for now, and then later I'm going to fit the resonate, resonated because I'm going to take sound samples from all of it. But for today, this is just the install. And if you got the resonated, the install is exactly the same. It's just the A and B pipes have, re have resonated sections in them. So let me fit the, fit the straight A and B pipe uh, and crank it down and tighten it down. I'll show you what it looks like. Then we're going to torque down the rest of the bolts. We're going to put on the, mid, the correct mid brace and then we're almost done. Okay, so let's go ahead and start at the top, work our all the way down, make sure everything is done and torqued down as well. So we've got our four uh, nuts there at the top, the 11 millimeter at 19 Newton meters. We've got our reverse torques here at 28 Newton meters. Work our way down. We have the F brace on, the expanded F brace right there, which gives us a little bit of extra room. All of those Allen bolts are torqued down to 24. Now, when we look at our bell clamps, those are down and tight. There isn't a, a, a uh, listed torque value for those, so they're down really tight. Same thing for the torque clamps here, they're down and tight. And then we've got our red suspension hangers here and, and on either side at 19. And then we've got, lastly, back here at the back, our last hangers for the muffler right there, also at 19. So at this point, everything is torqued down, everything is hung, everything's in place. Uh, both of the, the valve actuators are plugged back in. So at this point, you're done. So what you want to do is go ahead and let your car down, fire it up, check the sound, see how it sounds, make sure you don't have any vibration, nothing's touching, but all in all, you should be done. All right, y'all, all done as you can tell. Put, go ahead and put all your tools away, clean up, make sure that everything was torqued down to spec, everything is tightened and where it should be. Your, your valves in the back are plugged back in and everything is good to go in your car and go out and take it out for a drive. Make sure that you don't have any exhaust leaks or any rattles. But all in all, I couldn't be more excited to have this in my car. And this is definitely going to be the, the DIY portion of this video. As I hinted earlier, I also have the resonated A and B sections for this mid pipe. So I'm going to swap those out and take sound samples as well. But what I want to do is have one comprehensive sound video for you. So you have the entire spectrum in the same car. So you'll have bone stock. 
you'll have with just the just the mid pipe in the mid my mid pipe plus the resonators and when i get it the new equal length mid pipe from from active auto work as well in addition i'm also gonna going to show you their new valved exhaust so you're gonna have a comprehensive sound video across the entire spectrum and it's also going to change as soon as i put my catalyst down pipes in as well but I, what i want to have for you is one comprehensive sound video so i'm not going to sample sound for you today this is just the installation video keep your eyes peeled for the sound video coming up soon Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to Active Auto Work for this fantastic product, and I'll see you on my next video.